Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And today we got a new 3D printer to unbox. And this one is quite a large format printer. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up and do our first print. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I got this printer from a company called Longer, and this is their larger format, which is called the LK1. So I've already unboxed and reviewed the LK2, so this is the larger version of that. So here we have the box that it came in. It's quite large. There is a lot of orange tape here on the top, and I'm not sure exactly what that was. Maybe it was open custom, so I'm not sure. But the box is quite large. You can see my hand on it. It is a big box overall. And here on the shipping label it says 30 pounds, so it's quite heavy too. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. I already have the tape cut here. So this is what we're greeted with. We got some foam here on top. Let's go ahead and pull this out. It appears to be very nicely packed. Lots of thick foam here. All right, so here right on top we can see this nice large bed. So the size of it is actually 300 by 300 by 400 high. So it's quite a significant volume. So here it looks like we have a manual and we can see here some of the steps to go through and it appears to be like there's not much to do. So I think this printer is pretty much pre-assembled. Well, that's pretty cool. That should be pretty simple to put it together. So here they kind of show you what it comes with. And I like how they included everything that you need to do, including the power supply here, how close to have your nozzle to the bed, and then all the instructions to get started. Very simple, but quite informative little manual here. All right, so according to the manual, it looks like we won't have much to assemble and that could definitely be a plus. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can pull this frame out. All right, and so here we have the bottom piece of the printer, very nice. All right, so it looks like we have another layer of foam to take out. And here we can see the rest of the parts. So it looks like we get a box and quite a large one. All right, so this looks like the controller or the brains to everything. So it all does appear to be very nicely and neatly organized. And we do have the touch screen right here. So it's not a large touch screen, but it's a good size. So I think it's a 2.8. But here we can see the branding here longer. All right, and so for the last piece, it looks like we have the upper part of the printer. And it's all very well packed. And that's it. And that appears to be everything for the box. And I can tell you from unboxing a few printers now that this one was packed extremely well. It even has hard corners here for protection, so. Quite a good attention to detail and lots of foam, like a lot of foam. All right, and so here's our three major components here. So we have the power supply with the screen, then we have the bottom part with the built plate, and then we have the upper part here, and it's all assembled, which is very nice because we won't have to do much in that area of putting things together, but we do need to check everything before we put it together, make sure it's all flat and good to go. So for the first part, I wanna check out this build plate and it looks to be like a glass with some textured sticker here on top. So it looks like we have four clips that just pop right off. And here we have the build plate, which is glass. You can see right there, very cool. So it is a sticker of some sort, looks like on the glass. And we do have the branding here and it's quite clean overall and it's blue. I definitely like that they have glass here because you know you have a choice you can either print on this or you can flip it around and print on the glass and here we can see our heated bed here and the cool thing about using glass is that you're gonna get a really flat surface so I'm just gonna move this away for now and let's take a closer look at this frame here all right so it does look like we have six rollers and three of them are the adjustable offset rollers that you can adjust and it looks like that they do need to be adjusted yeah and it's actually moving 
So this one is extremely loose right here. And I can see that some of these rollers don't roll all the time. So, And also here guys you can see a little closer the connector to the bed. And it is soldered on right there. So I feel like it is quite strong and shouldn't be a problem. But if you wanted to you could technically upgrade to a bracket that you know hooks up over here. And will hold this might be a good idea for the long run. But overall looks very solid. And it looks like Longer is using their own stepper motors. You can see right there. And here we have the Y end stop switch. So. so it looks like we're utilizing a 2040 frame here for the ends in the middle and then a 2020 on each side. And I definitely quite like this design because it is a box and so it's much stronger than if you would mount to here somewhere, especially this Y axis rail where the bed rides on. So this should be quite stable for its size here. All right, so the first thing you'd want to do is you want to take this to a flat desk or table. And you want to make sure your bottom frame is really flat. So you're going to loosen bolts around and make sure it's sitting nice and flat and then tighten them up. So if it's already flat, then you can skip the step. So the next thing we need to do is adjust the eccentric nuts on this build plate. Before we could do that, we need to find the tools. So let's go ahead and see what's inside this box. All right, so let's go with the filament here. So it looks like we have 200 grams of white PLA as a test filament. Very nice, and it comes on a little spool. So we also have very nice little cutters. Never seen these kind before actually, they feel really good. So here we have a micro SD card with a USB adapter. We have a cable to connect to the computer from the printer. So here we have the correct power adapter for the power supply. And here we have a baggie looks like of a some cleaning needle there. Our wrench that we're looking for. Some zip ties and a little flat head screwdriver. And also it comes with this pack of nice Allen wrenches. I definitely like these, I like the longer ones with this ball in here. So it appears to be the hardware for the mounting the braces with an end stop on one side and a spatula. All right, for the last part, it looks like we have some kind of spool holder assembly here. Because this printer is so tall, you know, you wouldn't want to put a spool holder on the very top. So it looks like they included a little kind of spool holder here. And it looks like it just snaps all together, just like that. It just goes to, comes together. And it does come with little bolts that go through the bottom here to hold it. And then you have this little piece here that will hold the spool. And that should just click in just like that. And that's everything for the box. Alright, so I'm going to grab my wrench. And we're going to go under here. And on one side, hopefully you can see that. But there are eccentric nuts here on each of these wheels. So these are stationary and these are adjustable. And what we're going to do is simply just adjust them. And one of the parts that's a little bit hard is that, you know, you can't get to the other side to hold the nut on this bolt because of this build plate here. You can see they're inside there and this is quite a large area here to even reach it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the aluminum plate off. That way I can get to everything a lot easier and I can adjust this the right way so I don't have to come back to it ever again. And in order to do that, we're just going to take these four knobs off and the build plate should just come right off. All right, so now our build plate is out. Make sure not to lose your little springs here. And now you can see we can get to the top of this bracket part here and able to hold these nuts and tighten them together correctly. So we'll go ahead and loosen all these just a tiny bit. And the reason we don't want to loosen them too much is because if they're too loose, once you adjust this, you'll still you know, have wobble. So later you'll be either too tight or not tight enough. So, so now that we're loose, we can see this thing's moving around quite easily. So we're just going to start with any of them. I guess I'll go with this one here. And we're going to tighten it till it barely starts to grab. I mean, so ever so slightly. I'm going to leave it right there. Same thing for this one. Ever so slightly. And then ever so slightly. So we're going to gently move this. And it looks like we have contact on all of the wheels there. So I can see this one's still a little bit loose. So, But when you have it all just gently, the next thing I would like to do is go ahead and tighten these up the bolts just a little bit like all also barely tight and the reason you want to do that is because any offset that you will get from just tightening it completely kind of goes away because you can't really adjust these unless you have this bolt pretty tight already or it won't be accurate so now we're going to test it so we can see that this one looks to be okay this one looks to be okay also so none of them are skipping or moving around but this one here needs to be a little bit tighter and so the point is, is to barely have contact while not being loose. And that's going to give you the smoothest and the longest lifetime out of these wheels. And obviously, you know, it has to be very stable 
with no movement at all on the channel so so now we can go ahead and tighten these all the way because they're already pretty much almost tight we're just going to snug them up all right once you snug them check it one more time and if everything looks perfect and it's smooth as butter if you feel anything while you're rolling it that means you've got something too tight probably now we can put our build plate back on and proceed to this guy here all right so i put the bed back on and you can see here the ribs of the uh, heated bed and i also went ahead and put the top part the glass build plate back on also so I guess we can look at our assembly diagram here and it doesn't have anything written on here so it's all just pictures but it's quite straightforward as you can see you know we just need to put the top part on the frame and then bolt it underneath then we're just going to put our little brackets here this one's on the right and the one with the end switch on the left so quite simple and then for the last part we'll just plug everything in all right so let's look at this thing um it looks like that because it's not moving at all it appears that they put some bolts right here, I don't know if you can see right there, right here to hold this thing together so it doesn't move around. Which is quite smart, you know, for it not shifting during shipping and, you know, damaging itself. Because we only have one lead screw on that side, you know, this thing is vulnerable to moving around quite easy. And now we should be able to move up and down and we sure are. Very cool, alright, so we're just going to go up a little bit. But if you look at these three rollers here, and if you just take one of the rollers and you pull on it just a little bit and see how hard it is to do you know like a little burnout here if it's quite easy then that means it's good but it's still holding tight and you can check each one so that's one of the ways I can do it if you want to do kind of like a quick test that's usually what I do if I can spin this quite easily and it still makes a good contact that means that the tension is just right like on this one right here it's very hard for me to turn this any of these wheels it's quite tough so that, that just tells me that that's too tight. This is not the best way to check your wheels, but this is how I do it because I've checked so many of them already. I know what exactly to feel for. Just wanted to share that little quick tip that what I do. But if you're unsure, go ahead and, you know, loosen them and tighten them all up like they need to be. But because they assemble these, you know, most of the time they're pretty good or almost right. But there will be times where they're not right. And that might confuse you later on when you start printing while you're having issues, I guess. All right. So this should be quite simple. We have the Z motor here and the rod already connected and installed, ready to go. So this should just sit on the frame just like that. And it will sit on its own. The motor here kind of helps it sit also because it's flat. So we're gonna grab our baggie here of the braces and the hardware. We can see here we got quite a few bolts. And then we have two braces here. And they appear to be aluminum because they're ultra light. And here we have the one with the Z-axis switch that'll go on this side because this is where our connector goes. But before we put the braces on, the first thing we need to do is in the pack of bolts, there's four larger bolts. And these are the ones that are gonna go underneath the frame into this channel here. So then we should be able to just lift this up like that and then kind of start our bolts from underneath. So you don't have to put the printer on its side or anything like that. You just lift it up a bit. Maybe I can show you a little better here. Lift it up like this and start the bolts. And it's quite simple. So go ahead and tighten these up until they get just a bit snug and then just leave them alone and we'll do the other side. Same thing for this side. We're just gonna lift it and then start our bolts. And these we can go ahead and tighten really tight. And then we'll go back to the other ones and tighten those and we should be done with this part. All right, then we're gonna take our brace here. And this is the one that goes on the right side here. And we're gonna need four bolts. And it goes just right there, just like that. So now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten them up. And we are gonna do it all the way. And that's it, now we're gonna go to the other side. So this side is the same thing, but the only thing is it looks like the bracket goes this way here. So your end stop switch goes right here, just like that. All right, so we just gotta tighten this all the way and that's it, and we're done with the assembly. So as you can see guys, that was not very hard to do. And now we have our structure together. And so our Z axis should move really smoothly. So you might wanna check that. So we can see here, if you just push down on it, it should go really smoothly with no issues all the way down so and make sure your end stop here gets clicked on this side so it looks like this printer was put together very nicely and we don't have to adjust too much or mess with anything everything feels quite well so for the next part we have wiring for the hotbed we know we have a little plug here that we just need to plug in into there and same thing for the hot end plug here to plug into there. Well, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this controller here. So here in the back, we can see there's a pack of wires that come out of it. And there's the two plugs that go in here. 
Here we have the power connector and it is fused and we have a little on and off switch. On the bottom we have rubber feet, some vent holes here and that's about it and our little touch screen here on top. But on the other side here we can see we have the voltage selector so it's 110 or 220 and we already have it on 115 there on the inside so we're good to go. So make sure you check that. Especially if you have 220 voltage you don't want to power it on on 115. And here we have the connection to the computer with the USB cable and here is our micro SD card slot. And it's quite nice that it's here right on top so it would be quite easy to fish it in there. So, And here on one of the sides we can also see the specs of this printer. The model number, the voltages, the power rating, the printing size 300, 300 by 400 and the serial number. Alright so I went ahead and took out the screws from this power supply here and we're gonna pop it open here hopefully and we can kinda look at this thing. So here we see the power supply, 360 watts, 24 volts. All the wiring and connectors are very nice and clean. And also, if you can see that on the top there, we have a little duct that blows air to the side instead of inside the cover here where the rest of our components are. So hopefully you can see that, but on the top there we have the LCD screen. And below that is our main board there. So we do have a heat sink right there. Looks like maybe for the bed. You can see that guys, all of our stepper drivers there are heat synced. And the processor looks like is an ARM. And the board does say longer 3D right there on the bottom of the left. So that's how it looks like inside. So for some reason you do want to take yours apart. There's three bolts here on each side. And then there's four bolts right here. And that will come apart. Alright, so for our last step, let's go ahead and connect all of the connectors together. So the bed and the hot end have different style connector. You can see the hot end has a few more pins. So you're not going to, you know, mess that up. The bed and then the hot end on the edge there. So those go on pretty good and they screw on. It's actually quite nice. Just like that. And then from here we have a bunch of wires. They are all labeled so it's not that confusing to plug them in. So the one that has the E, the X is for the top here that goes up here. And then the other pack of wires are for the Y and the Z. So the larger plugs are for the motors and the smaller plugs are for the switches. So here we have the Y motor. So the Y motor plugs in underneath and then the Y switch plugs in right here, right in front of the motor, right there, just like that. So here we have the Z motor. So the Z motor is right here and that just plugs right on the bottom right there, just like that. And then our Z switch is right here and that plugs in right behind here. So very simple. As long as you know where all your axes are, we have the Z, the Y, and then the X up here. So we're done with one pack. We have another one left. So here we have the X motor and then the X switch, which is right here hiding behind metal bracket. So then we have the E motor, which is the extruder motor, which is which plugs in right here. And here we have the last wire, which is it says E switch, which is the sensor for the filament detection. And that's up here. And that's basically all of our wiring. So as you can see guys, that wasn't too complicated. Everything is labeled and quite easy to figure out. And as simple as that, we are done with the assembly. So this printer was designed to have the control module here on the left side and then the printer on the right side. All right, so now that we've assembled this thing completely together, let's go ahead and look at it a little bit in details and look at all the features. And then we'll see what's on the SD card and maybe print out a few of the samples that they have on there. All right, so let's take a closer look at the LK1. And as you can see guys here sitting on the desk, it's quite large. Being a 300 by 300 by 400, you can see how tall that goes. And just by looking at the hot end, it looks really tiny compared to the form factor of the printer. So it's quite a large format, especially going on the Z axis tall there. And the part that makes me worry is that if you're going to print, you know, that high, you know, how stable can you be all the way up there? In order to find out, I guess we'd have to print something that high. But in any case, if we go here to the top, we can see we have a 2020 channel here. And then we have the 2040s going down on each end. And then we got a 2020 for the X axis here. So it's all quite thin and you know pretty slim overall. And you can see the bed has quite a low profile also to it, which is quite nice. I do like that. So if we go to the back here, we can see that we have only one lead screw here for the whole printer. But usually that's not a big of a deal. So if they decided to go this high, it must be stable enough to, you know, have only one. But we do have a little bracket here and it's metal. That's pretty nice that they put that in there because of the height. 
And so since our spool holder, nothing goes up here, we're pretty clean up here going down. So as we go down here, we can see that this is our extruder assembly. And we do have a filament detection guide right here, which detects if you know the filament runs out or it's there. So that's quite a nice feature if you're gonna do a long print. And for this large format, you definitely would need that. So all this here is plastic, but it does feel quite good and strong. So should be able to last quite a while. And here we have our extruder motor. And then we have the coupling here. And as we come down, you can see our coupler right here. And it is one of those that bends in all ways. And then down here, we do have our Z switch bracket that we put on. So back to the top here, we have the X axis motor, the switch. Then we have the frame here that our hot end rides on. So here's where you would tighten and loosen this belt. So let's take a closer look here at the hot end. So it looks like we have one of these normal looking fans with a shroud here on the bottom. And it looks to be that the shroud is 3D printed and it's blowing down right into here. So this was bent like this, I think on purpose, in order to shoot the air down more directly where it needs to go. So we're not gonna touch none of that and leave it alone and print the way it comes. So there is a little fan in here for the heat break. And there's our block, our heater block and then our 0.4 nozzle. And so for the bottom, we have the Y-axis motor there, and then the switch next to that. And then we have this main rail here that runs through the middle, and that's what the bed sits on. And we have a large 300 by 300 glass bed, and then an aluminum heater. But I am worried a little bit that it's glass, so it might be a little heavy. So you might wanna limit yourself from printing too high of a speed because of the weight of the bed here. But other than that, it looks really nice. So here we have the tensioning belt bracket for the Y axis. And then we have rubber feet on all four corners. So quite a nice printer. All right, so I think we're ready to power this thing on. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's go ahead and hit that power button and see what we see on here. All right, and so this is what we're greeted with. So it's a quite nice little clean design and our printer did power on. I hear the fans blowing right here. And this thing is definitely blowing too, so I'm guessing that's the power supply. I can actually feel the air coming out of the side here. So let's quickly go through these menus and see what it has here. So first here, it looks like we have move head. So if we click on that, you can see all the features that you can do with the move head. And here you can kind of decide manually of what kind of increments you want to move. And here you can unlock the stepper motors. I guess that's what that's for. So on each corner over here, you can see you can manually home each axis. Or if you click this one down here, you can home the whole printer. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and it looks like we homed. But we are quite close to the bed here on the edge, so. So just be careful with, you know, not pushing too hard on the bed. So if we hit unlock here, that should unlock all our steppers because they were locked. And yes, they are. So now we can move it with no issues. So if you need a quick unlock, you just click that little guy right there. So here is where we're going to choose the files to print. So we don't have a card in there, so there's nothing there. Here's the extruder menu. So this is where you get to load the filament. Looks like you can go ahead and preheat it and then, you know, move it forward or back and outer. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but here you can control the amount that it moves at a time when you click it. Here we have preheating. So we can go ahead and heat our bed up and our hot end. It looks like here we have hot buttons for like PLA. Very cool. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure everything works. So we'll do PLA. So you can hear, see it says it changed to 200 and, and then the bed for 60. All right, so here we have recovery. If you do lose power, you would be able to resume it from here. All right, so let's click on more. So we have leveling. So we will need to level the bed. It's pretty awesome how they have the five points. You can click anywhere and go straight to that point. And then we have settings here. And this is more advanced stuff. If you know how to mess with this, you could. There's five pages of it. And here we have about the printer. And that's it. Pretty straightforward and simple. All right, so we go back here to preheating and we can see our hot end is up to temperature and our bed is getting there. And I can tell that it's getting warmer. So since this is glass, you know, it's gonna take it a little while to hit temperatures. All right, since everything's warming up, let's go ahead and level the bed because definitely we're gonna need to do that next. And we'll hit our first spot here on the edge. And I like to use a posty note because it's quite thin. And we can get a accurate level here. So you can see guys, we're quite high. So I'm gonna I'll loosen this spring here because I got it compressed quite well. 
So we're just going to kind of adjust it until we get it just right. On the first try, just get it close enough and keep going throughout the bed because you need to go over it two or three times because the first level is always, you know, quite off. And, you know, if you adjust that corner, this corner will be off again and whatnot else. So go around it a few times. And what you want is just like a bare, barely a drag on the, uh, on the post, you know, here. So let's go to our next corner. So I'm going to go around and do all the corners and then do them again and get it flat and straight. And then we'll go from there. All right, so I think I got my bed pretty level. Let's go ahead and insert this SD card. And I think it goes upside down like this. Yeah, it does. All right, and then we're going to hit files. And here we can see some of the stuff that it has on there. Wow, it actually has a bunch of G codes. Very interesting. So before we can even print, we do need to put some filament in here. And instead of using the filament that was provided, we're just going to use the roll that I have already, a white. We don't have to open a new one. Plus, that'll give us a chance to test out this spool holder here, if you did want it to use it. So I went ahead and put the nuts and bolts in here on the bottom. You can see it's basically on the very end there. So it seems to be okay. And kind of the cool part is we can put it right here, right on top of this supply here. So let's see if I can do this one-handed. So we're going to see how good this spool holder can hold regular spools here. And it looks to be just fine and actually can hold wider ones. So if I go to one edge here, you can see we have quite a bit of room still left in here. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and load our filament in. So we're going to go into the filament detection sensor here. And then through the gearing here and into the tubing. So let's go ahead and click on extrude here and see, I'm going to change this to maybe five and see if we can extrude some from the hot end there. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it should be pushing through. Okay, so it looks like it did a bit. I'm going to do it again. All right, so it looks like we're purged a little bit there and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and start our first print and see how that goes. So we're just going to go with this small square that's included on the SD card and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so you got to click open here. Are you sure you want to start printing? Yes. And there it goes. Okay, so it looks like we purged a little extra there. Alright, so there it goes. Okay, so our bed leveling looks pretty good. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to clean the nozzle before it left. It's printing a... looks like a raft anyway. Oh wow, definitely on a good start here, guys. The main part is is that everything is functioning and working as it should. So as it's printing there, let's check out some of the options that we have here. So it looks like we have a pause and then to stop. So I guess this is to cancel the print. And here we have more options. So let's click that. So it looks like we have the hot end adjustment, the bed adjustment for the heating, the fan adjustment, which is at zero now since it's on the, it's not running right now because it's doing the raft. And then we have the speed. We can speed up the print or slow it down. And these are the increments you can choose while pushing plus and minus. So it'll go five at a time. If I click on that, it'll go 10 at a time. So just keep it on five. And it looks like we have more dots. And it looks like, okay, so here we have the flow. Get it to extrude faster or slower if you're having under extrusion problems or maybe too much extrusions. And here we have all the information that we need. So we have the file on top, the extruder temperature, the bed temperature, the fan, the z-axis height, the percentage that it's done, which is 5%, the time that's left to do this print, and then how long it's been running. And here's kind of like the status of what it's doing, which is printing. Very cool. I definitely love this touchscreen. This is definitely a very nice experience compared to the old school, you know, with the knob and the pushing and stuff. So, all right, so it looks like we're doing good here. Everything's fine. This is what we have so far. Seems to be doing a great job overall so far. All right, so it's done and it took 24 minutes and 50 seconds. So let's see how it turned out. The bed is still warm. It seems to be coming off pretty easy. Let's see if we can just pop it off here. And there it goes. That was a nice and clean removal there. So hopefully you can see guys there on the lines. It looks quite good. Actually did a very good job. Let's see how easy this, this raft comes off and it pops right off looks like. That's nice. So it looks like we have a little bit too much extrusion here on the edges. But you can see, guys, the quality of the print. Get some reflections here. It's quite nice. The layers are very uniform. Very good print. Well, I'm pretty excited. Let's print some more stuff off of that SD card. So I guess when the printer is done, we need to push the stop. So that resets us back to home. Click on Files here. 
So I guess let's just print an order here. So the next thing is pineal fruit, whatever that means. I guess we'll go ahead and print that in white also. So we'll see how that turns out. And maybe I'll print a few more other things in different colors maybe. And uh, we can kind of judge a little better what we're looking at here. So this one's going to take 2 hours and 36 minutes. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit of printing time. So we'll see how it does. But overall, it looks like we're doing really well. And so far, a great experience with this printer with no issues whatsoever. All right, so after the cube, I printed quite a few things. And all these little things you see up front, that was from the SD card. And this big vase here you see, that was, I actually sliced that. And we'll take a look at it in a second. So the first thing I printed was this little, whatever it was called, pinel something. But you can see how nice it turned out. It actually looks pretty good. There is a little bit of layering, but it's quite well overall. And all the prints that were on the SD card, they all had the raft on them. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is to take it off. All right, so this one came off really easy. And because of the raft, we have a decent bottom here also. So so overall, this one turned out really well. And it has a lot of little details you can see right here in the print. So I would say this was quite successful here. And that's pretty surprising because this is a quite a tiny little item compared to the size of this bed. So that was quite encouraging. So after that, I changed the filament to blue and printed out this little test print here, I guess. And it came on the SD card. So this is the degrees of lean here as you can see right there so it's kind of to test overhangs but as you can see on the top it actually looks great all the way to 70 but on the bottom here you can see where the overhang starts to become a problem right around this area which is exactly at 50. if you want really nice clean bottoms from this printer then don't pass the 50 overhang and it'll look all perfectly nice so there is a raft on this too let's go ahead and see if we can take it off Okay, so this one's a little bit tougher to come off, but and on the bottom there's actually something written. I didn't even I didn't even notice that it had that. It was hiding underneath the raft. Alright, so the next print was actually quite short and it was just this DNA strand. So I used the same blue filament. This filament is actually not the best filament I got. It gives me trouble once in a while. And I was quite impressed with how well everything turned out here. You can see how tiny this print is. But look at those strands or bridges between the two poles. It actually did very, very well. I was actually quite impressed with this print for how tiny it is and delicate. So when it was printing this box, you can see it was way too hot. It all kind of just melted down there. So let's go ahead and see if we can take this raft off. Okay, so I did get it off, but I weakened it somewhat. So you can see here on the outer wall even, it's quite consistent for how tiny it is. And you can imagine, guys, how many retractions it has to do. So I feel like it did extremely well. And so after I printed the DNA, I put in the green filament and the bullet came out next. That was on the SD card. And the bullet was quite impressive, guys. If you look at it, you can see how well and uniform those layers are. So this printer has no issues with layer bonding. You can see how great it is. And look at that tip this raft off I'm pretty happy that I've been able to pop all these rafts off with quite ease right, here's what the bottom looks like also not too bad and the thing to take away guys is the layer bonding here it's absolutely perfect there's no shifts or anything I really like this printer and for the next part we have little owls here I guess that's what these are and it's in that same green filament and as you can see guys this thing has a lot of detail so you can see on the overhangs there it's, you know, kind of losing it. But overall, in detail, it's quite well. There is a little bit of layering here, or shifts maybe, I'm not sure. But this filament, the green filament, it actually looks like something's going on, but actually nothing's going on. It's just kind of like color shifting in the light. Because if you look at the reflection, you can see how immaculate it is, pretty much. So very accurate printer, guys. And look at these little ears on the top. So, so far, all the rasp been coming off. That's pretty amazing. With quite ease, too. So, I'm not a fan of rasp, and this is the reason why. Because they never really look good on the bottom. But, you know, it does give you that extra security. So, yeah, did very, very well. So, after printing all these things on the SD card, I felt like I needed to print something more significant. Because we have quite a large bed size. So, I went ahead and printed this vase here. So, this was printed in 0.16 millimeters of height 45 millimeters a second on the speed i can't remember the height exactly but it's like 230 or 40 something like that so it's quite large but not humongous 
and it was printed in spiralized mode so it just has one layer so I haven't took it off the bed yet and I did print it in this red PLA which I really like the way it turned out so let's go ahead and scrape this thing off see how easy it comes off it should come off really easy so far all the prints been coming off easily and this one's no exception all right so let's take a closer look at this thing this thing is quite impressive look at that layer bonding guys it's beautiful so there is some lines in the print and I'm not sure if that was designed like that or the printer made those but overall it's quite beautiful and you can see this is you know a pretty complicated structure here that moves in every direction it's like a little twirl and the inside seems to look really nice too in there a very good print I would say excellent I don't know how much more you'd want to expect from a budget printer and even our bottom is perfect well, look at that beautiful print and these are the kind of prints that get me excited about large format printers is that you're able to print things that you wouldn't be able to print on a small printer this still took like six hours to print but how large of a print you can make with spiralized mode in quite a short amount of time and we could go much higher with this printer because printing to 400 is quite a high height there and you know you can get really creative of what you can produce going up so so it looks like we had no issues up here whatsoever so i'm pretty confident we can go to 300s close to 400s and probably still have the same quality all the way up so all right guys so this is what we printed for the first prints of this longer lk1 so it's quite a phenomenal printer i definitely was not expecting the quality to be this good you know it has a huge glass bed here you know that's quite heavy to move around so i think as long as you don't speed up the prints too fast you're going to get amazing quality prints you know if it can deliver great quality on these little small prints i know it'll do great on a large print so from this initial review guys i'm going to give this thing a huge thumbs up because i feel like it offers everything you'd want in a printer you know you're never going to have problem with leveling because you have the glass the way it's built is very nice and it's braced good so there doesn't seem to be any kind of wobble or shakes the one lead screw seems to be plenty as long as you're not too tight on your wheels here and you're moving smoothly so it does have all the modern features like the touch screen filament detection just in case you run out on a long print and you need to change your spool and obviously it has power resume too so so it's got you covered with all the modern features and to mention again how great the bed size is which is 300 300 by 400 tall so so this thing has been great right out of the box so i'd actually recommend this thing to people that are just starting out because there's not much assembly to do as you saw we just had to put this together with the bottom piece and that was it and plug in all our wires so it's very easy for someone that's starting out and i feel like it doesn't need any kind of upgrades at least right off the bat you know maybe some teal smoother or something will clean it up just a bit you know the fan i don't think is going to get much better than what it is right there with the shroud and the type of fan that's on here so if you're just starting out and you're looking for something simple i definitely recommend this also not to forget the ui on the touchscreen there is very simple to use and very intuitive all right guys well that'll be it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did then hit that like button if you want to pick up a printer like this i'll leave some links in the description so check those out and also go check out my lk2 video which is the smaller brother of this printer if you don't want something this big and if you enjoy videos like this and you're not subscribed to this channel then hit that subscribe button i got a lot more 3d printing stuff coming up and quite a few more printers to unbox so stay tuned for that and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace